It's a lot of credits. <laughs> okay, let me make sure this is up and running. Okay, we can get going anytime. Okay. Yep. Do you want to start? Oh, yeah. Let me introduce what we're doing. Um, hello, everybody. This is Rachel Cassidy with the Utah Division of Drinking Water. Welcome to our uh, February webinar. We've got a guest speaker, Shannon Rasmussen, with the Rural Water Association to talk about the conference that is just mere weeks away, and we hope that we will see you there. So. I'm going to let Shannon give you all the gory details about the conference and we'll go for there. Okay, thanks Rachel. It can get a little gory down there, so it's probably good we <laughs> give you a warning. <laughs> okay, so um, if you look here at the screen, we've got our dates up on there. If you have not yet registered, now is the time to, but we'll get into all the details there. February 25th through March 1st is the starting day on that. Um, Rachel, it's, oh, there we go. It's at the Dixie Center, and there's the address here if you need it. Most of you, or hopefully a lot of you, have already been there before. We always get fun new people, too, so this is kind of a good either review or preview for everybody. Um, this is kind of just an outline of some of the fun things that we have going on there. Most importantly, we have lots of great training, and you can earn um, most, if not all, of your CEUs, depending on how your certifications go for for the year just by going to the conference or going to both conferences. We have another one in August in Layton. Um, there's networking. I think there's a lot to be said for the networking opportunities that are down there. You can meet with the Division of Drinking Water or Division of Water Quality, um, the Division of Water Rights, all the state agencies will be down there, but also your fellow operators and elected officials and that kind of thing. Take advantage of that and, and get to know the people that are around you because you never know if somebody's dealing maybe with some of the same problems you are or having some of the same issues and how they're handling it. That's, that's a great resource that you can take advantage of is this networking right here. Um, and then, of course, like our, we have our exhibitors, and they have lots of the new technology and ideas and innovations that may be able to help you on your system. You can get certified for water and wastewater operator certification. We'll talk about that more in a minute. Of course, there's golf in St. George in February. Nobody can be upset about that. And then skeet shooting, the dart throw, the awards banquet. We'll kind of talk about all those great things. We'll start off with the CEUs. Um, now, this... Um, this may change in the next year or so. I know that there's some, some changes going on at the Division of Drinking Water. So on the drinking water side, we could see a change in this by next year. But for this year, the CEUs will still be run in the way they have been in the past. But this is most likely the last year that will happen, just so you're aware of that. But if you go to the in-depth training, which is our classes on Tuesday, you can earn 0.6 for that. The regular conference, which runs Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, you earn 1.0 CEUs for that. And then the operator certification, that one, will again, we'll talk a little more in depth about, but it starts on Monday at 1 o'clock and goes through Friday. So you earn a little bit more for that one, 2.1. And then the single days, they'll vary based on the hours of training. If you just can get down there for one day or whatever, it will just depend on which days you go, and we'll calculate those based on which days you're there, that kind of thing. Um, and then sometimes there's some confusion on this for both the Division of Drinking Water and the Division of Water Quality. All of your CEUs can be earned through a conference. So I know there used to be a rule that talked about how you can only earn so many CEUs from conferences, but that is not the case any longer. You can earn all your CEUs by going to conferences, and that's a great way to get them. So um, first of all, there is we have a conference app. And that I would suggest take a minute right now and get that downloaded just so that you can familiarize yourself with the conference. These are kind of some of the, the topics that you can click on and look at on the app. You can create your own schedule so you can go through ahead of time on the training sessions and star the ones that you want to go to so that there's a lot of information in our conference agenda, lots and lots. And it's all in this app as well. So you can just carry that around on your phone and you know, look at the different speakers, see the different exhibitors. You can star the exhibitors you want to go see or write notes about them or whatever on your phone right there. It's a great resource. It's free. You just need to go. There's a link right here. Or if you go to your Google store or your Play store, you can just 
look up Rural Water Association of Utah or RWAU, and that'll just download the app to your phone. You can keep it after conference if you want. If you are like me and have no space on your phone whatsoever, then you can delete it when you're done with it. But um, just take a look at that. That's a really big resource. And there's like a fun game you can play and, and those types of things, but it's, it'll make a big difference with your conference experience. So, and I would suggest doing that sooner than later, A, so you're familiar with it and you do have to sign in. You don't have to sign in more than once, but the first time you go on, you'll need to sign in and it'll send you a link to your email and that kind of thing. So it's one thing you can get done ahead of time that will make your conference experience a little better while you're down there. So I would say do that today when you get a second. Okay, so and Rachel, if you want to chime in on these, you're more than welcome to. But we've got a whole bank. It's called the Mezzanine Rooms, and it's a bank of training rooms on the second floor of the Dixie Center. And we have essentially that's a lot where our state agencies are located. They also have booths in the exhibit hall. And when we get there, I'll show you where you can find them if you want to go visit with the divisions. But they have what's called workshops up in or consultation rooms, sorry, up, up in this mezzanine area. And one of them is the consumer confidence reports. Um, Rachel, do you want to take a second and talk about those? Or sure. Okay. They're a little bit different this year. Yeah. So what everybody is used to is that they show up and and staff from the division and or rural water will sit down and put together the CCR for the water operator. This year, it's a training. Uh, it's a one hour booking that you call Brandy Smith here at the division and make an appointment. Um, and you show up for the one hour period, you get 10 minutes of instruction, and then you will be at a workstation with a computer and a short, very short manual. It's not overly complicated. It's very simple. And your data and we'll walk you through how to create the CCR report on your own. So it's a shift from us doing it for you to us teaching you how to do it on your own. Okay, that's perfect. Thank you. This is, if you guys want to relate it to fishing, it's the teach a man to fish, right? <laughs> teach him to fish. Teach a man to fish. So that's what we're, we're going to this year. I think it's a great idea and it's really going to be a resource for you down the road if you can take a minute and call the division and get an appointment for that. What do you have? What's your phone number? I should um, put it on here, sorry. Eight, oh, it's fine. 801-536-4200. And kind of the purpose behind it, I should probably give some reasons why we're doing this. It's not because we hate you. <laughs> and it's not because we like to make people suffer. Um, the purpose behind it is, is that when you send out that consumer confidence report, it's a representation of your system and you. And so if there are errors or things on there, um, we should not be the ones responsible. That should be the water system that's responsible. So we just want the water systems to own the CCRs and you really get to know the organizational structure to them so you can really use it as a tool to communicate with your public because they're your customers, not ours. Okay, thanks, Rachel. And that it's like I said, it's a great resource. Take advantage of it and and take that ball into your own court and and have that relationship with your people. I think it's a good thing. So, um, and then if you look the DDW consultations, you can call and make appointments for those. And all the detailed information about what's going to be there and who you call for appointments is in our conference agenda. And we'll show you that online. If you didn't get a copy in the mail, we do have a, um, a link to that online from our website as well. So we'll give you the place to go that you can look at all this sample site plans, cross connection, um, or backflow, all those things will be there. Also division of water rights will be there talking about the water use program uh, at, in those mezzanine rooms. So those are some great resources that kind of run all week and give you an opportunity to take advantage of those. Okay, operator certification. For you guys that are taking operator certification, you if you're taking the water exam, you have until Friday, February 15th at 5 p.m. to submit to your exam application to take the exam at the conference. You can register to take the class on our website or on your registration form at any point, but you also need to send in a separate registration to take your exam. And right here, you can see where to do that. Donnie Jacobo with Division of Drinking Water. This is her phone number and her email address. You need to get in touch with her to set up to take the exam. And you have until Friday, February 15th at 5 p.m. to do that. Um, and then wastewater, guys, I'm sorry, that exam ha deadline has passed. You can talk with, here, let me shut that down. You can talk with Judy Etherington at Water Quality to see when your next opportunity is, or you can, probably the better thing is to look on their website, deq.utah.gov 
to find out the next opportunity to take the exam. Now you can still take the review class through Rural Water at the conference and that's you just register for and we'll get to how to register for the conference later on if you haven't already done that. But the schedules for those exams, so you guys are aware, every year we get a couple guys that I feel really bad for because they show up at 8 a.m. or whatever on Monday morning and you don't have a class then. So <laughs> um, make sure you re you make note this one o'clock start time. It's on Monday, February 25th, 1 p.m. Um, and the doors won't even open until 12 o'clock noon. So we, we do that, A, because we needed a little bit more time. But then for a lot of you, that makes it possible to travel down Monday morning instead of having to travel, you know, Sunday or whatever. Some of you, if you're going to do it, you have to travel Sunday. And I'm sorry, you just got to find something else to do Monday morning because I know you like to get up at 4 a.m. no matter what. But um, there's, always, <laughs> there's golf. always golf. Yes. So you can go golfing Monday morning. But those classes will start at 1 o'clock. So make a note of that because we get some confusion on that every year. And then they'll go through, it'll follow the class schedule of the rest of the conference. You'll just go to your own classes while everybody else is in the breakout sessions. But we still give you time to go to the general session and the voting member meeting and some of those fun things that, that make you want to be at the conference anyway. So you still get time to go to the exhibit hall and that kind of stuff. But when the classes are in session, you'll just be in your own operator certification classes. And the it's typically, there's a schedule that you'll get. You'll If you're wastewater, you'll get this schedule. And if you're water, you'll get this schedule and a training manual when you check in uh, at the conference there at noon on Monday. And then just, it'll tell you your rooms right here. Typically water is in the Sunbrook room and wastewater is in the Entrada room. There are a few, a few um, exceptions to that, but it'll be listed on your schedule. So you kind of know where you're headed. If you're in water, you want to go to the Sunbrook room, wastewater is the Entrada. Okay. And then speaking of golf, our golf scramble is Tuesday, February 20, actually that should say 26, sorry, but February 26 at the Sunbrook Golf Club. Um, shotgun start at 9 a.m. And this is just the list. You get breakfast, tea time, cart, lunch, and then they always do some fun giveaways and they have some fundraiser holes where you can bet against your fellow golfers and no cheating. I mean, we all know you guys move the pin wherever you want instead of where your ball lands, but no, I'm just kidding. It's true. <laughs> Just kidding. We have we have good honest golfers. I think that's part of the game. It is part of the game. I know. I know. Um, and sometimes Vern will give you a licorice rope bit to help improve your golf game and, you know, all sorts of fun things. So, but just keep in mind as you do those fundraisers that the money for that goes to the water pack, which if you haven't heard of that before, it's the national rural water effort to continue funding to keep the circuit riders out in the field helping the water system. So it does go to a good a good cause on that on the golf scramble there. So if you're a golfer, make sure and take advantage of that. And you can contact, you can either sign up for a team when you register, you can put all the names in, or you can contact Vern Steele in our office. He's the one who sets the teams up on those. Okay, um, training. So there's also Tuesday, we have golf and we have training. And that is, um, this is a screenshot, I guess you could say, of our booklet. And this agenda is available online. And this is also the information you'll find in the conference app. But if you, again, if you didn't get one mailed to you in the mail or you don't have your copy, you can go to our website, rwau.net. And on the conferences link, if you go to the annual conference page, there's a link to this agenda. And you can look at all the classes ahead of time so you're kind of familiar with what's going to be there. But if you go on Tuesday, these are a little more in-depth look at something because they're an hour and a half sessions instead of an hour session. So we try to dive deeper into some of the topics. We don't always have time to do that on the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday classes. Um, wastewater, we have a lagoon expert coming in this year. So if you are... Um, if you have lagoons on your wastewater system, this is a must attend on this. This guy is phenomenal and he knows absolutely everything there is to know about that. So, and that's going to be an all day training. And so this is kind of a, kind of an exciting thing for us on the wastewater side. But then we also have management classes, water, small systems, and engineering are the topics there that are offered on Tuesday. So again, these few pages in the agenda are where you can find those classes and, and take a look at those. Okay, so on Wednesday, again, the regular conference starts. So if you had a full conference registration, that would include Tuesday. If you have a regular conference registration, you come Wednesday. So 
that starts, if you can see, this is again, just screenshots of that booklet page there. But 7.30 a.m. is when registration starts and there's donuts and juice and coffee in the exhibit hall. And then classes start at 9 a.m. on Wednesday. And this is, as you go through, this is the 9 a.m., 10 a.m., you know, or 10.30 a.m. on it through. And then in the breaks, we encourage you to get into the exhibit hall and, and take advantage of that time with the exhibitors there. Now, the exhibit track, we have an addition this year. And actually, let me show you in the book. I'm going to go back one. If you look right here at the end of each day where there's the exhibitor track, it'll show as an option for classes you can go to. It was, if you guys were there last year, it was out in the museum atrium, but we've got something else going on out there this year. It's moved into the Entrada A this year for that exhibit track. And that's this room right here at the back side of that wastewater operator certification area. But pretty much what we have done is offered our exhibitors 20 minute time slots to come and pitch their ideas. So it's this is kind of where we're at for those exhibit track hours. You just would go to that class like you would a different CEU class if you want to take a look at what these guys have to offer. And sometimes I know we've had some people say, well, you get a little maybe intimidated by you don't want to be sold in an exhibitor booth. But if you're sitting in a class with people and they we tell them, you know, sales pitches are OK and you can just come and show people what it is you do and what you're about. And it gives them a minute to go into depth on their product or service. So it's kind of a cool feature. If you haven't taken advantage of that, um, everyone who has been to that has really talked about how much they loved it. So this is kind of a cool educational opportunity, maybe without some of the pressure, if you feel pressured by the you know, giveaway ducks and whatever they have in the, <laughs> in the exhibit hall. But come take advantage of this. This is pretty this is a pretty cool opportunity. Okay, and speaking of the exhibit hall, this will be open on Wednesday. So they set up on Tuesday and then they're open Wednesday. So make sure you get in there. There is so much out there that is available to our water systems that just be open and go educate yourself and make it a goal to hit every vendor and, and talk with every vendor. There's a lot of time and effort and money that goes into bringing their, their goods here for you guys. And I think it's a really, really kind of a cool opportunity. It's one of the highlights of the conference for sure. So don't miss out on that. A lot of education can happen just by going through the exhibit hall. Okay. And then um, this is, sorry, this is just the layout of our exhibit hall. This will be on your app or you can view this right now on our website if you go to mapdynamics.com. And again, there's a link to that from our um, from our actual website here. And I don't know, Rachel, this, this will take us there, won't it? Anyway, if you go to the, our website right now or if you, and click to link to this, might take a second. I may need to come back to this. So I'm my computer slow. Here we go. So if you look here, you can hold, hover over each booth and it'll tell you who's in that booth. Or if you have a certain company you know you want to see, you can just click on them and it'll show you. If you can see when I, I can't, my mouse can't be in two places at once. But, <laughs> but if I hover over their name over here, it'll highlight on the exhibit hall where they are. So if you have, you say, oh, I know I want to see them and them and them, you can kind of make a note where they're at. Your app, you can also star them in your app and find them that way as well. So just a little tidbit for you if you are looking for somebody specific there. And then we do again have the dart throw areas back behind the garden room and then there will be booths. Um, we're almost sold out, but there will be booths all around here as well. So Okay, Wednesday, another big highlight of the conference is our keynote session. And we will have an update from our president and the national, Kent Watson, the national world water president. And then our motivational speaker, who is Rick Roberts. And he does um, a really great Andy Griffith impression. So, or a Barney Five, sorry, impression. So he's going to be kind of wandering around our conference ahead of time. So watch for him. And then he'll be speaking at the keynote session. And he'll also be emceeing our water taste test the next day in, in the voting membership meeting. So he should be a lot of fun there this year. So make sure you make note of that. And then we always like to do just some additional thing. I know if you've been there in the past, we've had caricature drawings and photo booths and just some fun things for our attendees to participate in. Well, this year we decided to do a blood drive. So there will actually be a blood drive at the conference on Wednesday. It'll go from 8 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. And it'll be just kind of out. There's a hallway type area right here outside of the museum auditorium classroom. And there'll be some curtains set up, but there will be a blood drive back there. So we really strongly encourage you to um, exhibit, or not exhibit, <laughs> to sign up ahead of time. And we'll, I'll show you this link here. We have our own 
Rural Water Association blood drive on the American Red Cross. So if you go here, you can see the Rural Water Association of Utah blood drive and see the times and you can sign up. There's, it's limited, so make sure that you get signed up if you really want to take part in this. We really encourage it. But you can go ahead and sign up ahead of time and have a set time. Now, anything that's open that's not already called for uh, on site, they will have walk ins for anything that's available there. So take advantage of that. It's a, we thought it's, we have a big group of people and it's a good opportunity. Now, you will, if you do sign up for the blood drive, there's another link on your confirmation registration that you'll want to go through some pre donation questionnaires that make sure you're eligible for the blood drive and, and you can also access that on there as well. Okay, the skeet shoot. Now make a note on this year, my time home, I've got to pick it up. Our time's going fast here. Um, the skeet, for the skeet shoot, it's on Wednesday instead of Thursday. That's a big difference this year. So last year we had it on, or uh, in all the years from, from here, far back as we can remember <laughs> since it started, it was on Thursday. So this is a, a big change. We've swapped the nights of the ski shoot and the awards banquet. So the awards banquet used to be on Wednesday. It is now Thursday. That frees up Wednesday for you guys to go out with the vendors while they're there and do some of those fun things. And then we'll have the awards banquet Thursday. You could, but take advantage of the ski shoot when you register for the conference. This is kind of some of the basic details on that there. And again, this is also available on the app and, and on the agenda. So then we move into Thursday where we have classes again in the morning and check out your agenda if you want to take a look at those. And then our voting membership meeting. This is one of the highlights of the conference and a great place to just feel the pulse of the association, see what's been happening, where your money's going, all that good stuff, and get kind of a feel for that. Now, if you are not a voting member of the association, we have a couple of classes that are out there for you so that you have a place to go. You can either visit longer in the exhibit hall or the, the exhibitor track is still going, or there's these classes in wastewater and in water going on in other areas. So there is other options for you if you're not a part of the voting membership meeting or, or you don't you know, you can, you don't have to be a voting member to go to the meeting. Anyone is welcome to come to the meeting. We'd love to have everybody there, but there are other options if you want them. Remember, there'll be a ticket in your packet because anyone who voting or not, anybody who goes to that meeting gets a free entry to win the Henry Golden Boy rifle. So you'll just drop that in as you go into the meeting and then the winner will be called at the end of the meeting. Now, the other part of this is the water taste test. You'll make sure and bring a quart of your water to the conference. You'll submit that on Wednesday. There'll be a water taste test area kind of by the entrance of the exhibit hall. Submit a quart jar of your water. Make sure you get that into the taste test contest. And then the final drawing or sorry, the final judging for that will be held as a part of this voting membership meeting on Thursday. And that's from 1030 to noon in the garden room at the exhibit hall. Okay, so then Thursday night is our award banquets instead of award banquet instead of Wednesday night. So we have um, first of all, we'll have the award presentations to just congratulate everybody who has done such a great job on their water system for the year 2018. And then we have entertainment is the Johnny Cash now. His name is Grace Sarton, and him and his two band members do a Johnny Cash tribute show that's just phenomenal. So I think that will be kind of a fun one. We're excited for that one this year. And remember, it's Thursday night, not Wednesday night. That's a big big change on that one. And it, we're also starting it a little earlier. We've started at 7 p.m. in the past. We're going to go to 6 p.m. for that one just to try to have it not be such a, a late night. It's a school night. You guys have conference the next day. That's right. <laughs> Okay, um, and then again, then we roll into Friday. Here is our last wrap up day of the conference. We have the water and wastewater operator certifications exams and more awesome training classes. We've got our treatment track on Friday. If we've got some specific classes dedicated to treatment, and then other the others. So we still we have water, wastewater, small systems, office personnel management. We have all those training tracks all week long, including Friday up until noon. So. 8.30 to noon is our training sessions there. Here's the details for the absurd exam. Um, Friday, March 2nd, obviously, the check-in is at 8.30, and then the exams will be up and rolling and started by 9, so that they can be out by noon with the rest of the conference. So make sure that you go that you go to check into your classes or to your exams by 8.30 that morning. And here's a list of the things you'll need, your photo ID, notarized proof of citizenship form, 
two sharp number two pencils. That's a big one. It's kind of crazy how many people we get that we don't really have access to a pencil sharpener there at the conference center. So make sure you're bringing your sharp pencils and your good eraser, your calculator, all that kind of stuff. So no on-site registration for the test. Like we talked about earlier, all that has to be done ahead of time. So if you miss this exam now for water anyway, you can contact Roll Water and you can set up an online exam if you miss the the, de the deadline to take the paper exam, but that will not happen at the conference. You would be setting that up to take it at a, a future date for an online exam, um, you know, when, when there's an opportunity for that. Okay, and then we wrap it up with our prize drawing from the dart throw. And again, I just realized I didn't really talk too much about the dart throw, but that is all the prizes that are at the back of the garden room there. And we have awesome stuff that's there. It's gun safes and guns and bow and arrows. I mean, it's different every year, but TVs, electronics, lots of fun stuff back there. So make sure, and again, all that goes to the scholarship funds. So the scholarship is something Roll Water gives to two students, uh, and sometimes three every year. And that's funded by that dart throw. So make sure you take part in that. And we know you guys all get nervous, but you don't have to be nervous to come collect your prize unless you look like this guy or this guy. And you give us a lot of <laughs> a lot of material to work with there. So, <laughs> okay. Um, registration options. We're just gonna gonna bust through these really quickly. But this is the paper form, and then this is our online form that we have. You can access either one of these through our website if if needs be. But most of it's done online, which is really fantastic. But we have. Um, we have all these options, water officer, wastewater officer. We've kind of talked about the what's entailed in all of those on the full conference. That includes a banquet ticket. That's the only option that includes a banquet ticket. So every if you get operator certification or regular conference and you want to go to the banquet, make sure you add that on in your registration process that way. Okay, and then just real quickly, when you get to the conference center, you will get a packet with an envelope that has these tickets in it. It'll have your name badge up here. All this is perforated. You just break it all out. It depends on how many banquet tickets you bought, what days you're going to be there. Each one will look a little different based on what you personally registered for. But just get in the line with your last name highlighted and then it will find your registration packet and check it in. And that's all you have to do. You don't have to come back every day to do that. Now, again, this could change in future years. But for this year, this you only need to check in when you pick up your packet. If you didn't register ahead of time, um, we really strongly register. We strongly encourage registering ahead of time. It's it's a lot smoother process. But if you didn't and you just need to come and register on site, that's absolutely an option. Just get in the line at the table that's just to the south of the main registration desk, and we can do an online registration for you, and we'll print you all this same stuff there on site. Okay, um, I think that's everything. Make sure when you go there, you take advantage of the cool things available in St. George and. Rachel, back to you. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Shannon. We're excited. I like getting the break and going down there every year. It's a lot of fun and really well organized. Um, so I don't have much for water systems. Usually I do those reminders, but I'm just going to pull up um, something that I want everybody to pay attention to. Um, and that is that the IPS rule is changing. We did a webinar on this back in August as to why the IPS rule is changing. And you can access that webinar if you go to our um, main website, if you click on monthly webinars and scroll down to August, it's around here somewhere. Um, or you can just go to our YouTube page. You know, I don't see it here. We'll have to, we'll, we'll load it on this page today. Um, but you can also go to a website, it's IPS, that utah.gov and it talks about why the IPS rule is changing, how it's changing. We've got a fact sheet um, that gives you some information. Oh, the webinar's right here. Hi, IPS update webinar. This webinar we did back in August and it just talks about the reasons why we are changing it. Please look at this webinar. It's not very long, super short, um, but you need to understand how and why the rule is changing. Um, the other things you can do is you can pull up the violation table here to look at what the current IPS points are for a violation and a deficiency and what the future ones will be after the rule changes, which we anticipate is January 1st, 2020. So in preparation for this massive rule change and adjustment, we will be providing the IPS, the updated, we call it IPS 2020. So we will be providing IPS 2020 reports for all water systems 
Uh, we plan on doing it at the conference. That's the current plan. Um, but we will also hopefully be sending you a mailing uh, where you can look at for your system the current IPS report, which is effective through the end of this year, and the future IPS report if the rulemaking goes ahead as planned. So you really want to pay attention to this rule change. We need your comments. We want your comments. You can provide comments here um, prior to the official public comment period because we haven't started the rulemaking quite yet. So the official public comment is not open, but you can still comment and be prepared, be ready to get a copy of your IPS 2020 report, compare the two, and now is the year of fixing. 2019 is the year where you can get this future report, you can fix everything. So in many cases, the IPS points are increasing for water systems and don't let that scare you. We have all year long to address those and get everything squared away so that your IPS 2020 report looks a lot like, um, well, it's just a lot cleaner and uh, you have you have a point total that you're more comfortable with. So be ready for that. We will be hopefully sending a mailing on that out prior to the Real Water Conference, um, but we'll see. So be ready at least at the conference to get a copy of that report. And then we'll also send all of the main reports to water systems in the middle of February so that you can have those to um, bring to the conference and uh, meet with us and talk to us about them. So we look forward to seeing you at the conference and we're excited, everybody travel safe. Thanks, thanks, Shannon. Thanks guys, see you in a couple weeks. Yep.